Hi all, this is um, the channel mask assignment redo tutorial and I'll show you why I'm redoing it. Okay, so this is for um, week five and six. So what I want to do is to advance it to a point where, and I'm going to go over all of this in a minute, um, I'm going to advance it to page five. So I want you to see kind of why I'm redoing this. Um, in the new Photoshop 2022 version, the camera raw filter works just fine. Okay, the camera raw, let me just highlight it. Camera raw filter works fine. The neural filter still works all right. But on this page, the um, lighting effect filter does not work anymore in Photoshop. And it's the same reason why the 3D one doesn't work is because they're taking away the advanced accelerating graphics card capability in a Photoshop. Okay, so um, we are going to have a workaround. So in your PDF file, there's going to be either, I'm either going to have both of them because some of you may get the lighting effect filter to work, but most of you won't. So I'm going to have um, maybe two of them. I'll have this one in there, in there, meaning in the module, on um, as the older version, including lighting effects filter, and then one that doesn't. And there is a workaround. It's not as great as using the lighting effects filter, but it'll work. So I'm going to go back um, to the very beginning, and I'm going to start with the woman to JPEG right there. So I have, and I'm going to bring this PDF on to my screen periodically, and I'm going to be moving to it. So meaning um, I'm going to be moving pages on the PDF. Okay. Even though I wrote it, I definitely want to um, keep it organized. And I may be going over here to um, my recording and pausing the recording several times. Okay. So that's okay. So what I want to do is have you start with this JPEG. See, I'm already bringing this over. It tells you to save as right away to Woman Castle Composite underscore your name. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put this on the other screen. So right away, I'm going to hit save as. So I'm going to file save as and I want to put it in there as Woman Castle Composite, Composite, your name. And I'm going to put in here um, B underscore Sorial. But I'm going to put in here that this is going to be my, um, uh, I don't want to say 2022 version, but I might as well. So this is my 2022 version of a Photoshop. So change it to a PSD file. Okay. Now, we have to um, not damage an original ever. So I'm going to, very first thing I want you to do is to duplicate the layer. Even if I end up, or you end up throwing it away, I'm going to turn it off. So what it wants, and I'm going to bring this back, is it wants us, and there's very many ways to do this in Photoshop, but I'm going to show you through channels, a way that you can find a channel and a way that you can use levels to finally turn it into the mask you see over here on the right hand side, which enables you to cut her out of the background with her incredible hair. And I'm going to zoom in and show you that I want to retain that hair. And these are high res pictures. When I say these, there's three more in there, but you're going to start with this woman and the castle. And then for a second version, because some of you are into photography and some of you just want to do composite images. I'm going to show you how to those at the end. Okay. So what I do first is I see which channel has the best contrast. Well, I already know it's the green channel. So I'm going to click on the red one, not good contrast. I'm going to click on the blue one, pretty good contrast. I'm going to click on the green one, better contrast. Okay. Between the light and the dark of the background. But if you want to use the blue one or the green one, that would be fine. Okay, so actually for this one, even though the handout says green, you could use blue or green. Now, this is what you do. You immediately duplicate it. 
so you never damage an original RGB file. Okay, so very next thing it's going to tell you to do, even though I did start on the green one, let me see where I actually do that. Okay, I have to go back here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So we're going to take, um, I'm going to take the blue channel and we are going to go to levels. So I want you to see in levels, I'm going to level it off pretty dramatically. Okay, now this isn't to work on her picture. This is to turn her into a black versus white image channel because in a mask or in a channel whatever is black is going to be eliminated from your picture whatever is white is going to be retained okay so you can see here how good the hair is actually being cut out of that background but look over here I actually flip this even says it right there I actually flip it's called invert the white background with the dark female into a dark background with a white painted female because white retains black eliminates so let's go do that okay so I now have a copy of the green ch of the channel and I'm gonna put in here um, I forget what I actually wanted you to say in here let me see if I tell you um, let me see if I say it in this handout, which I did last year, um, what I want you to name it. The female figure is ready for the duplicated background. Okay. So amount of feather. Okay. Let me see if I actually name the channel. Um, let me go here and see if I named it. So I just call it original cutout. Okay. So that it doesn't really matter what the channel gets named. Let's just keep it the blue copy for now. So I hit Control L or Command L for levels. We are going to drastically bring the white up in this, but I don't want to bring it up. Let me zoom in. I don't want to bring it up to the point where, where, look, I lose the hair. So we have to be careful. So I'm now going to bring the black over and you can see how by me darkening that and then gently raising up the white, how I'm getting that to look pretty incredible. Okay, a little bit more white, and I've now not lost almost any of that hair. And I'm curious, me being curious, I'm just curious to see what my levels were in that. And you can see how I'm 80, 110, and 170. Let's see over here how I'm, um, I could raise this up to 110. I have to go this way. There's about 110 right there. And um, that was on 170, I'm 154. So um, I could actually go back to 170, but I'm gonna keep it right where I have it right there. That's fine. Okay, now look, I actually have her almost cut out and I haven't lost her hair. Could you draw paths around all that hair? The answer is no way. Okay, so this is the, really the only way to do this properly. Okay, so now, your job is to make the white white and make the black black. So that means, that means I'm gonna take the B key and I may pause this in a minute, but I'm going to go make my brush bigger. Look how much bigger the bracket keys make the brush bigger. Right hand click, make sure you're practically all the way hard, soft, I'm sorry. Normally, I deal with a zero on the hardness, but I want to go more towards the hard side so that I don't get a lot of extra paint. See how when I put this at 100%, I usually paint between 8 and 10% on the flow. But now I'm going up to 100, which I never do. But if I'm painting in black, look at how quickly I can fill her image in. I don't care about her face. This has nothing to do with her face. It has everything to do with cutting her entire image out. Now, I have to determine whether that is a reflection or a hole into the background. Well, how do you do that? And I also want you to see that when you're working on a channel, the layer turns red to tell you, hey, you're not working on any layers. You're actually painting on a duplicated channel. So this is how I see 
what this is. Watch how I click the RGB image, click it. Now I can tell that that kind of is a hole in her hair right there. So now I can click back to the blue copy and I don't want to get rid of that. But out here, that's part of the background, right? Well, I am going to lose some of this hair right here. But I want you to see how I'm going to take a big brush, hit the X key, and let's just paint in white on this. So I want to take a huge brush and paint in white, but now get really close to that hair and use my artist's license to make it a little bit softer and to come right down on that hair like this and let go of my brush, my, my mouse, every now and then. You can see how I did that. Now I'm going to come down like this and I'm going to come into the center here and then I'm going to soften that edge as I move down to here. Now, this is what I got to do. The flow goes down to about 10%. The softness goes a little bit more soft. So I right hand click. Now do you see how I can paint gently and put more white next to that hair and have that look really pretty? Okay, and when I mean pretty, I mean natural. That's what I'm looking for. So now I can back off and you can see how that's not a bad way to do the side of the hair that way. I don't want to lose a lot of these hairs here, so I'm going to show you a subtle trick. Okay, subtle trick. I'm taking my lasso, right? Let me find where it's kind of whitish up here. Now, I am going to take the lasso and create a very quick selection away from her hair like this, about a quarter inch and come straight down like this and then go back up to there. Now I have a selection right in here. See that? Okay. That means if I paint, I can't hurt anything outside the selection. Okay, so I hit the B key, but I also want to feather, select, modify, feather that selection by about four or five pixels. Now, Command H hides the selection. Command H shows the selection. Control or Command H is to show or hide, show or hide. So I'm going to hide. Now, let me take the brush and first, first, before, before I take the brush, I'm going to hit another levels command. And I want to back off here so you see that levels is only going to affect the area that I have in that selection. So do you see how quick I can actually make that turn into, um, let me keep the black where it is and move this one over to, the, to this side. Okay, I haven't lost a lot of that hair right now, so now I still have that hair there. I am going to lose a little bit, so I'm making the brush bigger, okay? I'm at 10% and I'm painting in white. Do you see how I'm gently painting to the edge of her hair and I've almost got it? I've almost got that beautiful right there. Now I'm going to leave it just like that. There's nothing wrong with that. Now up here, I don't want to come anywhere close. Oh, can I, can you tell me why when I'm painting up here, nothing is going, nothing is coming out? It's because I had a command H selection on and it was only letting me work in that selection. And goofy me, I didn't hit control or command D to deselect. Now I can continue my process. Now I'm painting white all the way to that hair right there and I'm going to just use my artist license to paint that out white. Now it's taking me forever at 10% so I'm going to put it way up to 25 and I'm going to make the brush bigger and in a few minutes I'm going to go back to making the brush hard I think meaning not soft meaning away from zero. Okay so now I have a really good selection. Look at look at that up there in that corner. I have to go like this and I'm going to save my file, which I never did actually save it. So now um, I have that saved. So there is her cutout. I could have never tried to draw those paths. Do you understand? So that's what I want you to do first. Now I'm going to just so you can see duplicate the blue copy channel. 
Now, I'm going to deselect, save the file again, and I'm going to hit Command or Control I to it not in verse, to invert the image. There is that in amazing selection. Now, all I have to do is um, I'm going to uh, put a white background behind so I don't see the checkerboard. This is simply so that we don't have to deal with this checkerboard back here. And yes, I know I can go into preferences and I could eliminate it there, but I don't care. So I'm going to hit Option or Alt Backspace to fill that layer with white. I'll even name it white just so I don't lose my mind. Now I'm going to click on this. Click over to this background copy. What did I name it? Let me see what I named it. Just have patience with me. Original cutout. So let's start over here and go. So there is my original cutout. All right. Now, how do I make it work? I command or control click this black and white channel. Now, did you see immediately how I mistakenly clicked on the channel and that turned red in the layer. I got to click back to the RGB image up there in the channels. But I've got to hold Command or Control and click on the image. Now look, if I have this selected the way that I do and I just click the layer mask button, she is now cut out of that background. And look at that hair. That hair is amazingly cut out. Again, could you ever do that with drawing paths? I don't think so. So save your file. Now, the next thing on here says, let's go down, if I can find my brain. The next thing on here says, the female figure is ready. She is cut out of that background. Open the Irish Castle JPEG. Right click on the background and choose duplicate. Under destination, choose this document as the um, destination and make sure the new castle layer is under the female layer. So let's do that. So I'm going to go over to the asset file. Don't panic at how much stuff I have in here. Okay, so here is my asset folder. Here's the castle background. I'm going to double click it. Now, I don't really have to duplicate this background. I want to right hand click over here and duplicate that layer, but change the destination to my new PSD file and click OK. Now I can close that and not save it. Drag your castle background. Okay, drag it down below the female. Now look how pretty she is. Yes, she has a little bit of a bad glow on her, but we are going to now marry these two together. Now, what I did here was I am going to move the castle so it's up and over. to You can move it anywhere you want, but I'm going to click on the castle, hit the V key, and I'm going to move it up here. And you can see how big the background is, but that's kind of pretty right there. Okay, now save your file, Brian. So now the next thing we are going to do is, let me see, um, see how I told you to position? Let me see how close I was. Uh, yeah, wow, that's really close. I actually had the castle a little bit more. Actually, I moved her over to the edge, a list a little bit more. So I'm going to click on her, make sure the link is between the mask and her, click to that layer, hit the V key, Brian, and let's just move her a little bit over to that side, right there. Okay, that's perfect. That's great. Now let's go see what this says. Remember, if you're going to use the lighting effects and it works on your machine, then use this handout. If, you, if it doesn't work, then go to the other handout. But now we're going to go to with the castle layer selected, filter render lens flare. Now that still works. Choose movie prime, position the crosshair of the flare where you want. I posi positioned it in the lower left corner of the castle and I made the brightness to 120. Now down here I said, I then used a brush to sample a nearby sky color and reduce the bright shine 
in the sky and um, it's the red circle so see over here I reduced the amount of brightness over here and that's what I think I'll do because if I go over to the real picture do you guys see how bright it is on the back of her head well maybe I should just leave that this time but I used a little bit of that blue and I just kind of doctored it okay and I'll show you how I did that but with the castle layer selected filter render lens flare now in the lens flare I'm going to move that little, see that little um, um, plus sign? I'm gonna move it to the castle on that side, right over here where I'm pointing, and I'm gonna choose Movie Prime, okay? So it has a little bursty flare, that's pretty, and I'm gonna put this at, what did I say, 125, or 120 or something. Let me see what I did. Yeah, 120. Oh. I'll leave it at 125. Now I have a nice lens flare popping on the, it's like the sunshine, okay, on that side of the um, castle. So now let's go back here. I then use the brush to sample that blue. Okay, I'll just show you how. So now I'm going to click on the castle background. I should make a new layer so I don't damage the castle background. Now in a second, I'm gonna merge these two. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna leave her image on. Do you follow? But I'm gonna hit the B key and grab this blue. So I'm hitting the B key, holding Alter Option and sampling that bluish purple. Now I'm gonna put this on a multiply transparent mode right away. And I'll just say added blue. Now I want to make the brush huge and I don't want to paint at 25. Oh my gosh, down to about 10. And I don't want to paint with a hard brush. Make sure you right hand click and go to a soft brush. Awesome. Hit save on the file. Now I just, I even want to make the brush bigger. Okay. And I just, look at how I'm just, just dancing it over that edge. Now I'm going to turn her layer on again and I'm just going to kill that just a little bit more. I just don't want it so bright. Okay, now, I have the capability, if I made it too dark, to just take away a little bit of opacity. There, right there. That's pretty. Now, it takes your eye away from the brightness that it was. Now, I'm going to double-click this name and hit Control-C or Command-C. I'll show you why. I'm going to shift click on both of these layers, one and two. Now, if I go over to here to merge them, that is Command or Control E. E. Now, I want to double click it and rename it because it always takes the name of the top layer, and I'm going to save the file. Okay, the next thing. We are going to. The finish palette to the left, um, this is going to be different because, um, let me just move in here. The neural filter no longer shows this way. No longer does. It actually gives you the whole image, not just the tiny face. But we're not going there first. So what do I say here? On the girl cutout layer, the original, always duplicate it because you may cause an error. And if you cause an error, wouldn't it be easier to just throw away the layer that's the error and go back to the original layer and then duplicate it again and start over? That, could, that would be like smart. So we're going to go to Camera Raw Filter. This begins with the edits. Go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and use the settings, Brian. Um, any of the numbers that are changed would have been on zero. So I'm going to put this over here on my other screen, and I'm going to go into that window, and I'm going to... Um, direct myself to the camera raw filter so I click on her right there Let me make sure I've got this right and I don't want to mess her up so I'm going to duplicate it so I turn off the safe bottom one save the file click on that and go right into filter camera raw filter now hopefully this doesn't give me an error and Welcome to Camera Raw. Get started. It's my first time. Fine. I don't care about you. Meaning, I'm sorry. <laughs> so it knows that this was my original.
picture, okay? Um, let me cancel that for a second. Um, I don't know why it... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, at some point, I wanted you to see this. Okay, so you see how this layer, I, I made a small mistake. Didn't make a mistake, but I made a mistake. Um, I actually want to apply the layer mask. Let me turn this off. I want to apply the layer mask. See, if I disable the layer mask, the background's still there, right? Well, I don't want that background there. So I'm gonna enable it, but I'm gonna right hand click and apply it. Now she is truly cut out, okay? I don't even have that mask anymore, although I, it resides over here in the channels for my future use, very important. So I can throw away this layer, don't need it, but I wanna duplicate after I take the copy word away, hit the return key, Brian, and duplicate it. So where's my icon? Can't even see it. Oh my goodness, there it is. Okay, now I'm gonna take the word copy away here and put in number two. I try to stay organized, I do, I swear. So I turn this off. Now I'm gonna go into the camera raw filter and I'm gonna quickly, if I can, um, change my numbers. So my number was this, um, this needs to be kept on, on color. This needs to be kept on custom, okay, or put on custom. This was plus eight. This, you can see it changing. The tint was on 10. This was um, minus, the exposure was minus 1.50. So minus 1.5, okay. The um, highlights were at 60. The um, shadows were at minus 20. The blacks were at plus 36 and the whites first were at plus 40. So I'm just gonna put in a 40 and then I'm gonna take the blacks to plus 36, which is just 36. Um, the clarity was at plus five. So I'm just gonna put in a five. Um, the vibrance down here, let me move it down. The vibrance was on four and the saturation was on five. Okay, now, um, where is the preview? I know I saw a preview before. But anyway, um, let me see if there's any more. The answer is no, 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 no. I want to see about the exposure and make sure I have the 1.5 on there. Yes, I have the 1.5. Okay, so, um, and I can show you, because I made a duplicate of this layer, what has happened to her. All right, so I'm triple checking my numbers. Um, just bear with me here, 8, 10, minus 150, minus, oh, I missed one. Uh, no, shadows, minus 20, sorry, plus 40. I didn't do anything to the contrast. Nothing was done to the contrast. Okay, so I click okay, fine. I just was making sure. Now, I'm turning on the bottom layer. Here's the difference. So now we've started to take this girl who was really pale. Look at how pale she was. And in Camera Raw Filter, look what we gave her. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Now, I can click this one off, but I'm not getting rid of it. Control S to save the file. This now comes back. Okay, um, make sure the Camera Raw Filter layer, so now let's rename this Camera Raw Filter layer. So I'm gonna rename it. Okay, so now I come over here, this is now camera raw filter layer please name them as you go so you don't get all confused like i am <laughs> okay now we go to filter neural filters and if this is the first time you've used it you're going to have to follow the prompts to let you get on the window that you see over here to the right now the new photoshop camera I'm sorry, the new Photoshop neural filter has a lot more stuff going on in it. Ignore that, we're just gonna work on skin smoothing. And my numbers are, 
70 and 10 on blur and smoothness. Now I'm going to turn things off and on so you can see. Okay. Now um, I'm going to duplicate this layer and go to neural filter. So I'm going to put this on my other screen. So now I don't want to hurt this one. Okay. So what do you do? You duplicate it, turn it off, and let's go to neural filter. I'll just say N E U R A L neural filter one. I'm just going to say that so that um, you see what I'm doing here. Okay. And um, for some reason, I, I think she's been moved off the bottom a little tiny bit. So I'm going to actually turn all three of these females on click to all three, hit my V key for the move tool and just move that down. You saw that little line go away, right? Okay, now I can turn this off, off, control S to, or command S to save the file. Whoops, it happened up here. Dog on it, okay. I could make her a tiny bit bigger, but let me just go up one. There, that's perfect. Perfect, perfect. Command or control S to save the file. So now, neural filter. Let's, because I've named a new layer, I haven't damaged the previous layer and I can go into neural filter. Why it's between two bars, it's just a third party filter. Now, it is going to open up this window. Now, yours may actually say that it needs to actually be turned on, but I'm gonna turn on skin smoothing right there, just like it said in here. So get your neural filter and download it and follow the prompts and you can see how Photoshop has already zoomed in on her face. Now, let me zoom in and move this over so you can see what's going to happen. So I can actually now, um, this needs to stay, I didn't finish my sentence, I'm so sorry. This has to stay on new layer, click to preview so I can actually look, let me zoom in. Look what it's already doing to her face. I'm going to preview it on, off, on, off. And I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to use the healing brush. I didn't have to do anything. But this number goes up to 70 or so. This number um, goes up to 10. Now let's turn off the preview off and on. And you can see just how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh. I mean, I wish that was done to my face. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, great. So let's say, okay. Now the difference this year is that it creates a whole new layer. It used to just create part of the face, but now it creates a whole new layer. And let me show you what the difference is. I'm not going to redo this one. So if you see that this PDF creates that neural filter, fine. That's just 2021 version, okay? I can't keep up with everything. So don't panic when you see that it actually creates a brand new layer. So, and I don't know where the picture went, so I have to figure out, okay, I just have to hit Control or Command Zero to fit in screen. Now, let me double click this, double click this, take away the one and make a two, turn off this one and save the file. Now let's read what to do next. So we have her softened, now, this should be a pretty easy thing. So let me go back here. Okay, so we've done this. Now we're on the evil page five. Okay, the evil page five is because this one wants to use, where is the word, lighting filter added. It doesn't work. For 99% of you, it will not work. So I want you to do everything in the first two paragraphs. From then on, you're going to get a PDF, although it's not written yet, that actually has the correct stuff. So none of this applies to you. None of that. It'll be a brand new page five. Aren't you special? So now, here's what I want you to do. But let me, let me describe to you what I want to try to emulate. Do you see how the lighting effects filter concentrates a light glow on her face? Okay. I can fake that out. I totally can. It darkens her hair a bit, adds a light glow on her face, and when you consider that that's what she used to look like right there, 
all kind of light and pale and now look at the clarity of that well let's try to make that happen and it's not happening yet so this neural filter number two here I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to call it um, I'm going to call this one um, I don't know what to call it I there's I'm gonna duplicate it twice one's gonna be a lighter one one's gonna be a darker one so let me see what I actually named it here since my brain is gone okay let me back off so this one was a lighting filter added <laughs> so I'm just gonna say lighting let me let me put in here lighting lighting it just seems silly I don't know what to say my my brain is completely gone lighting layer one here that's good underscore darker okay I haven't done anything to it yet it's not darker it just says darker do you follow what I'm saying now I'm gonna duplicate it and say lighter now save the file okay let me widen this so we can see now we're almost done with this file believe it or not okay so I'm turning off the top one I want to make this just a pinch darker just a pinch not a lot just a pinch so control L or command L for levels let's just make this one just a little bit darker just a little bit okay so we add more darkness to this part of her hair all right we are actually going to put a layer mask on both of these and let me turn these off we are going to use the lighter one underneath here we're going to use the neural filter two as well as this darker layer and this lighter layer but let me make my point okay so now we've darkened this with levels now I'm going to lighten this one dramatically so let's zoom in on her face control L or command L and let's lighten up this and have a beautiful glow on her face so I'll just go a tiny bit darker and let me try to even make it a little bit lighter with a little bit more contrast okay perfect now do you see how we have made her a lot lighter on her face okay now here is a little secret uh, it's not a secret it's a technique uh, with nothing added to these layers with no selection active I'm gonna click a blank layer mask here and click this one and put a blank layer mask here now I'm gonna fill I'm turning this off and I'm gonna turn on the castle background I am going to fill this one up with black now I told you on a mask black eliminates so I'm gonna hit the X key hit alt or option backspace she's gone she is gone now I want to show you what I'm gonna do so to do that I want to click on one of these layers I'll click on the neural layer so I know where her face is okay I'm gonna hit the B key it's imperative that you use a big brush so you can see the size of my brush it's imperative that you don't go over 10%. No 10% over. Just keep it 10, 8, 7, whatever. Right hand click and do not go to a hard brush. Save your file. Now, I am clicked on the mask, not the image. I'm going to paint in white on the mask. White reveals an image. So, now that I know where her face is, okay I'm gonna turn off this bottom one and do you see how I'm now showing her lighter face look at how I'm painting I'm showing her lighter face right like this now if I turn on the bottom layer do you see how I now have a beautiful glow on her face you can almost not even get that glow any other way except with the filter that they took away that they took away from Photoshop that filter was filter render lighting effects now the reason it's grayed out 
is because I'm on the mask. Let me click to the layer, to the image. Filter, render, lighting effects. And I'm going to ask you, why would a Dolby allow something to be clicked when it doesn't work? You should just Google lighting effects, Photoshop, and you'll get all these angry artists who can't work with this anymore. This was awesome what they did with lighting effects. They took it away. So I'm not going to ever speak to them again. No, I'm just kidding. So look what I did. Just want to rehash. I painted black on the whole layer. What did it do to her image? It eliminated it. What did painting white on the black mask do? It revealed her face. Now, I'm going to show the darker one. Okay. On the darker one, I'm going to turn off the top lighter one. I want to click on the layer mask and I want to soften the outer part of her hair so it's not so dark out here. What color do I have to paint on the mask to eliminate stuff? It's black. So now do you see how I am actually going around the edge of her hair and I am now getting rid of it? I love the darkness here, but I wanted lighter hair. Well, guess what? The neural filter layer had lighter hair. Now watch the difference in here. If I right hand click and temporarily disable it, do you see how it went slightly darker? Let me enable it and then disable it. See how it's going slightly? I, I was hoping for a little bit more, but I'm okay. All right, now she has a great roundness to her face. It's perfect. But the edge of her hair is too harsh. Too harsh. Too, 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 too harsh. Okay? So what we have to do, and I'm saving the file, is we have to soften. I want to see if I say that in here. So forget what you're looking at there. Um, okay, so down here it says... Okay, this is talking about... Um, using a Gaussian blur. Um, let me just read it. Okay, so this is not, this is talking about the castle layer. So what I want to show you is I want to soften the edge of her hair, but I want to do it on all the masks. Well, I don't need to do it on this one, okay? Because this one is only showing her face. So I'll save the file. I want to do it on this one but I've already softened the edge of her hair. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna to click to the layer mask and now I'm gonna make it come even smaller, meaning the brush, I hit the bracket key and I'm actually going to soften all of this hair on the outer side. Remember, it's already on the other mask, on the other lower layer, it's already there. So I'm now taking some of this soft hair furry, I'm sorry, furry, <laughs> blurry hair, and I'm eliminating the, the harshness of it. Okay, I'm turning that off now. Now I'm turning this on, and the only one on so far is this dullish neural filter layer. Okay, but guess what it needs? It needs a mask. Now I'm going to go to the edge of this and gently gently, ever so gently, I better put this on like eight. And I'm going to zoom in and I want you to be patient, but I want to have a little bit of this edge be softer. Don't eliminate it a whole bunch, just a little bit. Now look, that's too harsh. So what do you do? Well, you use your artist license and you diffuse the edge of her hair so that it has a little bit of softness that reflects or refracts the background. So you can see what I'm doing right here is I'm just softening that hair. Now as I move back on it, that's going to look more normal. This looks a little too harsh right there. It needs a little bit of the sky color to come into that edge of that hair. I'm being really gentle. But look, if I mess up right there, all you have to do is hit the X key Make sure you're painting on the mask and I can restore that just by painting black back on, I'm sorry, white back on where I had the black. 
So that is really cool. Now let me go back, hit the X key, and now I can hit the bigger brush and I can come down like this and I can soften the edge of that hair ever so gently. There, that looks really good. Really good. Look at look at how that that what you don't want I didn't finish any of my sentences. What you don't want from a composite is you don't want it to look like it was cut out with a with a pair of scissors. Okay, now that's it. I'm done. That's beautiful. Turn on the darker one. Turn on the lighter face. Add one last layer above everything. Very important. Now I'm going to get a warm tone. So I'm going to hit the B key and I may have to experiment, but I have a warm tone in my foreground color. I'm going to make it a little warmer. So I'm going to come over here and make it that real pretty glow right there. What am I going to do to it? I'm going to fill it. Alt or Option Backspace. Okay, cool. I'm done. Oops, where'd she go? No. So I put it on an overlay layer or on a multiply layer. One of those two. Okay, not screen. Screen will go too much. So I'm going to leave it on a multiply layer. I'm going to hold Alt or Option and clip it to that layer below. So she is now only receiving the color of that layer. I'm going to turn this way down to an opacity that just barely shows up. Now, when I first put it on there, you probably gasped. Ooh, Brian, what are you doing? But look at the warm glow on her face. Let me just zoom in. Uh, well, I want to zoom in, but I want to have it like that. So look, can you tell that I've added a real pretty warm glow? And the more I let the opacity come further out is beautiful. Look at the glow on the rocks. Now the glow on the rocks matches the glow on her face, matches the glow on the castle. And you did it by having this. Now, do you know that you can apply um, a hue and saturation adjustment layer to layer one and also clip it and then you could just adjust the color by I'll show you but I'm not going to keep it so look at how I could go to hue and saturation I can just close this for a second I can clip it to that layer double click the properties and if I wanted to I could experiment with different colors on her face so do you see how I could actually go into a different set of colors and I could play with that. Well, I like what I already did in the color that I chose, but do you see how I could adjust it slightly to the red side or to the green side or whatever? Oh, she looks a little ill there, but I'm, I'm going to actually um, turn that off or throw it away. I didn't need it. Now, last thing, she has blurry hair. I want to create a depth of field and use my artist's license to do so. So the same way we did the upper one, we're going to do this one. So I'm going to save the file. I'm going to take the castle BK layer and duplicate it. Okay, perfect. Um, so what I'm going to do there is go to with no selection active. So I control D or command D. I go to, um, I forgot, filter, Gaussian, blur, filter, blur, Gaussian blur to about 10 pixels. So let's go to 10. And I'm going to say, okay. Now, do you see how nice and blurry everything looks there? Well, you have a blurry one and a sharp one. So I am going to now put a layer mask on this one. Look what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn off the bottom one. Now I'm going to take the paintbrush and I'm going to paint black. Let me bring this back over. I'm going to paint black on the layer mask with a soft brush at about 10 on the flow. And I'm going to show the castle through there. Now you're not seeing the crispy clean castle through there, are you? because I turned off the layer. So I'm physically with black or realistically cutting a hole in that castle. And here is the castle. Now I want to do all that. So I'm going to control Z back once 
and turn on the bottom one. Now, when I paint on it again with black on the layer mask, you're going to see the castle get crisp, but it's getting crisp because I'm revealing the lower layer. A little bit of the grass, a little bit of the castle, just so it looks more believable. Now, you're going to ask, well, how can I have a camera that can have two depths of field? How can it show cleanliness here or crispness here and crispness there? The answer is, I know I'm magic, aren't I? Isn't that cool? Oh my gosh. There is your composite layer. There is your ending corrected tutorial. So let me hit save on the file. And now what I want to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of this layer palette so I can pop it into the handout. Okay. And I'm also going to talk about in the handout what I did on these three layers here. Okay. So, um, let me hide Photoshop for a second. Actually, I can close this file because I want to go into this. So there is another image you can use. This is the image you just used. Look at how, look at the difference in that image. If I were to show both of them together, let me bring back Photoshop. Let me turn back on that picture. Okay, let me zoom out, hit the tab key. Let me go in now and bring up this one. Remove the tab. Make her smaller. Just bear with me here, please. Make her smaller. I'm sorry, bear with me. I'm trying to do this right. Okay, now I'm going to put them both together and I'm going to move this one over. Look at that. We used an amazing technique to composite and make real two pictures. And we kept her hair integrity intact. That to me is outstanding. Okay, just outstanding stuff. It's beautiful. And yes, there's more that we could do. There's a little bit going on with her hair here that I'm not happy with, but I'm fine with this, okay? And so would the client be. So I just wanted you to see the, the, the amazing transference. I think that's beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you want to, please um, try this with the other images and go ahead and pick a nice background. Some of the students have already put new backgrounds in, meaning, they went ahead, let me close that, let me click this, let me click that. They went ahead and like with this woman, they put her in Paris, a couple people put, put her in Vegas. Um, this one here, they put her in a circus background or, or in a Cirque du Soleil background, that was fun. So um, I just want you to enjoy this and I'll see you on the next assignment.